Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, hopefully, I do have good news for you. Um, just an update on the uh, emergency generator here at the uh, township building. Um, uh, Coleman Mitchell made their gas connection on uh, last Tuesday. Uh, all the inner connections with the transfer box have, have been completed. And Palco uh, is scheduled to uh, come down here on the 9th of uh, February, which is a Wednesday, and they will. Uh, uh, program the controller and set the uh, uh, schedule for the exercise time on the uh, self-test and they will also conduct a training session for us on that day. Uh, at that time, that generator should be online on February 9th. February 9th. February 9th. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, second thing on my uh, uh, notice tonight, I met with uh, Vincent Lay from the uh, Washington County uh, Planning Commission with regard to the uh, Galati Road Bridge. Um, right now, the uh, tentative schedule is to advertise next Wednesday, February 10th, with a bid opening for February 2nd to replace the uh, bridge on Bloody Road. Wonderful. Uh, I met with uh, Vincent um, uh, last Friday out there, and we're going to coordinate some work activity with him uh, in-house. There's a 18-inch uh, stormwater uh, pipe that needs to be realigned so they can construct a, uh, a tow bench adjacent to the uh, roadway. That, uh, that structure is currently uh, 12 feet wide. The uh, plan structure that they're going to put in there is going to be 18 foot wide. So we'll have to construct uh, tow benches on both sides of the bank to make the roadway wider to the approaches uh, match. Wait, excuse um, me. When, when he's saying they, he's talking about the Washington County. It's a county bridge, and they're doing the project. That's correct. Um, I got an early. I got a word uh, this morning from Vincent. Uh, he expects. Uh, that uh, sometime this week we'll have a contractor out to start demolition of that structure uh, before the end of the week. So uh, the, the game plan right now is to use the existing abutments. Um, they're in good shape to remove the parapet walls below grade. Um, they're going to extend the uh, upstream and downstream wing walls and then uh, put new uh, uh, back wall beam seat on the existing abutment and then set the uh, uh, five-year uh, span across the, uh, the stream down there. Um, I, it's a 90-day project. It's, a, it's what he told me, 90-day or less project. Uh, we expect that uh, construction will get started in earnest uh, mid-April. Mid uh, it, it, it's going to be a, a paved, uh, a clo closed deck, uh, uh, five-beam span with uh, uh, deck bands and, uh, yes, yeah. uh, the, uh, the uh, guide will be, uh, will be uh, structure modern. To the uh, um, Yes. So that's good news. Uh, the only other thing I had, uh, and I sent uh, some uh, late notes over to Don, and he said this. Uh, he told me that he for the uh, cost estimates to address uh, the uh, trees over in the park. There are 27 uh, ash trees in the park that are are dead and must come down. Um, there are, uh, there are two varieties over there. There's a green ash, a white ash. 
Uh, 27 trees to be uh, topped or taken down, topped, and 17 stumps to be ground. Uh, we have two bids, and I think everybody's uh, uh, privileged to have those uh, bids. And I'm just looking for some word whether you want to move forward with that project or not. I haven't looked at the uh, one I think came in today. I yes. I have a chance to look at it. Um, can you discuss what the bids are now? Yes, I can. I can, uh, I, I can discuss those with you. Um, I have uh, I solicited uh, three bidders. Two responded. Um, one was Fairfield Tree Service. Um, they submitted a bid for the uh, exact same items 27 trees, uh, grind uh, 17 stumps, a top, and the uh, public works department will haul out the 8 to 10 feet logs that can be to save money. Money. Uh, their bid was seven thousand six hundred eighty dollars, and the low bidder on this uh, particular project was uh, Bulldog uh, Tree Service or Tree Care from McDonald. Their low bid was five thousand seven hundred twenty-five dollars, and I'm recommending uh, a award to Bulldog Tree Care of McDonald. And when will they do? Uh, they have indicated to me that they can start as soon as I. Give them a notice of award and issue a notice to proceed to the meeting. Both companies, both companies agreed all 27 trees are diseased. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, we walk the park for part of the I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, bid from Bulldog for Bulldog. I'll second it from the hundred. Moved and seconded. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you, Board members. And I have one thing that I want to say to you and to everyone. Um, there was a young man who during the storm was in three or four townships in the Washington area. And when he came back, he said that the Cecil Township roads were cleaner than any of the other townships that had been. So we can have to do all the Thank you on behalf of uh, the guys. They worked really hard to take a great little pride in the job that they did. Uh, one other note that I have for everybody, um, it was uh, probably a year and a half ago that I sent a note, a note over to, uh, to Rob uh, Rosati of PennDOT about the uh, guy grow height out here near the park. Uh, they got to that this week and they uh, removed the reset the height for the guy grow out here on Rod 50. So it um, took a little time, but it got done. So uh, my hat's off to PennDOT for responding. <laughs> Uh, that's a good segue, Bill, moving right into a PennDOT issue. Uh, as you know, we've been uh, talking back and forth with PennDOT and other people related to the uh, proposed flashing signals for O'Hara Road. And uh, at this point in time, uh, we have a response back from PennDOT. If you recall, we talked to the before, and there's a property owner over there that we need right away from who absolutely says he will not grant that right away. Uh, that being on, as you're going on 980 out towards O'Hara on the left hand side of the road, uh, Mr. Uh, H A N C Q, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, but we do have a sufficient right of way on the pristine field side of the project, and there could be one flashing signal pole put in instead of uh, the customary two. PennDOT has indicated that they don't, uh, they're not requiring this project, therefore they're not mandating uh, two poles, one would suffice, they will work with the township if that's the desire to proceed. Uh, my, my purpose in bringing this up is, number one, does the township still want to proceed with this project? If you do, we'll notify PennDOT, they will finish the plans, and then it will go out for, it'll, it'll, it'll be in a form that they'll go out for bid, PennDOT and will prepare the plans, or uh, and, and with the one signal, or. Uh, is there some other approach you want to take, or is this project not going forward at all? Dan, so just looking for some input. Dan, question. Uh, what side of 980 would it go? What side of 980? As you're, uh, if, you're, if you're coming from Cannesburg, headed towards O'Hara Road, yeah. we have right away on the pristine field side, which would be the... So the right side, north side, north side, right, right side. On the north side or the right side. We don't have it on the left side. You know, we really do need it on the left side, I think. Right. People come around that, that bend, right. and they're right on. So, so your choice, I mean, if you want to, I mean, the, the property owner has indicated he does will not grant the easement. Well, how much frontage does he have? I, I, I would say a 
pretty fair amount. And we want to buy R2 Chartiers. What's his reason? He just doesn't want to see the lights flashing in his proper water. Dave, we install like um, signs that says uh, dangerous intersection or something to that effect just on um, southbound or both directions, north and southbound prior to that intersection with the O'Hara Road. Um, I've talked to several people with, and uh, police chief, some officers, and they feel uh, most of the accidents occur here are uh, huge driver or human error to go through all this expense and that, um, you know, after a while, you forget there's a, a flashing light there. I agree with you. And it's going to be very costly. Right. What if we put, uh, like, some signs for warning people before that intersection? That's an option. We would just have to, uh, we would have to determine what type of signs comply with, with PennDOT and get their okay to put them in there right away. So we could come back to you with that as an option if that's the board's, uh, didn't we already do this uh, signage uh, to reduce the speed limit? Right. One thing. Yeah. John, can you speak to it? I, I, for some reason, I think you're right. I, I thought Pennon had placed advanced intersection warning signs. You know, just just the standard sign, a, a metal sign, aluminum sign, to uh, warn of the intersection ahead. But this was the next step. Short of, and they really didn't want us to put, they wouldn't approve stop signs at that intersection. Right. And they really didn't want us to put a signalized uh, intersection there, controlled intersection. So, we met with the state probably. Yeah, you've been, I mean, this is what, yeah, you know, over two years? Two I just would hate, I agree with supervisor, because I'd hate to see us waste our money. When, I said, I agree with supervisor Akizio, I would hate to see us waste our money on something that's not going to be effective, or would be just as effective as putting up signs that say dangerous intersection ahead. Dan? Those construction entrance signs over Muse really stand out. I mean, I know there's like three of them close together, but I mean, you really notice them when you come into that knock on Muse, the village here. Doesn't I'm talking stuff that that affect both sides. Right. And minimal cost. Doesn't the state, uh, Dan, you should be able to answer this question, I hope. Doesn't the state regulate what signs can go on? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's why I said we would have to see what the state would approve us. Didn't we go through this already? Oh, we did. No. Sean, Sean shaking his head yes. We did. Yeah, we're, we're talking about the meeting that Elizabeth and I we met several times at the state. Yeah. And they do the study and they pretty much told us that they will not accept any kind of traffic control device there, meaning stop signs, uh, a traffic light, and they did accept the flashing lights. But uh, they do make all the guidelines for the signs. Came. So, yeah, we did they say no to signs? They didn't, but I think they put up as much as Don said that they would because they did the study. And I think it was, what they call mouse ears, the plus and orange triangular. Right. right. So, they, they put them up. We could keep continuing to try to get them put more signs up. And, and I do agree. Larger orange signs, anything identifying the intersection, it, it needs to be done. I, I preferably would have rather have the stop signs or a, a traffic light. And I talked to Supervisor Gizio and Calvin. Um, that's the only thing that's going to prevent somebody from pulling out by noticing traffic coming. But we can't. I mean, the state already just wants to know this. I know, and it just I just believe with more traffic, maybe a couple of years later. Maybe they'll consider. So you're saying don't do any, you wouldn't recommend doing anything now? I but? recommend anything. I, just anything. But step up signs like uh, yes. Yes. anything, yes. Try, try to go back to the drawing board, maybe do another traffic study to see how much traffic's going through there now. We're continuing, the fire departments will agree. We're having accidents there, there are serious accidents. We, we need to put anything there in, in the meantime, work towards a traffic control device. Yeah, we